just gets better. So the th third setup have uh, some big shoes to fill. Okay, coming up, manual CPR. And arguing for this topic is uh, our own Jenny Helmer, an advanced care paramedic and paramedic specialist with BCHS, as well as the director of research with the BC Paramedics Association. And arguing against is uh, Dr. Andrew McPherson, who is a colleague of mine in Victoria, emergency room physician there, but also is a, the medical director for the Canadian Red Cross and Canadian Coast Guard and sits on Ilkor. Uh, but like several others in the room, what he really likes to do is the ski patrol physician on Whistler. Improvement. 
And then we have a meta-analysis by Gates and Perkins. Thousands of patients again, no superior outcomes to mechanical CPR. This one is my favorite. I call this the McPherson trial. <laughs> and the irony is, is that Dr. McPherson is debating against this. I actually had to Google it to make sure it was him. <laughs> So again, thousands of patients, this is the CARES. This was about 8,000 patients, you can correct me if I'm wrong. 80,000. 80,000. So this was the first trial to show that there are actually, mechanical CPR is actually associated with lower neurologically favorable survival. What? Wow, okay. So here we have all studies, mechanical CPR, no benefit, may cause potential harm. Okay, why? Theoretically, if we were just to have a discussion, we might agree that if we could introduce a machine that could match the man, perhaps we should see some benefit. One of the main problems with mechanical CPR is the time it takes to put it on. The migration of that little suction cup starts slamming away down here. You have to stop everything, move the cup back, bring it up. You've wasted valuable, valuable minutes. And we know what happens when we lose compression. We lose that beautiful cerebral and coronary perfusion pressure that we're after, and it takes some time to get that pressure back up again. <coughs> some other reasons, battery powered for the most part. We understand the problems with that. We perform the way we train. Again, the paramedics and the firefighters coming out of school, they are training in manual CPR for good reason. Pit crew CPR is about manual CPR. It's about understanding your role as a group. And manual CPR, good quality manual CPR, is at genesis, the germ of that. Oops, I forgot my hand. Said no paramedic ever, but I tell you for sure, a paramedic has said, oh no, I forgot the Lucas. What? You show up on a short of breath call and they're in cardiac arrest, you just get down on your knees and you start chest compressions. You don't need your mechanical CPR device. And we know that. And then there's a problem with the too big and the too small. The too small, as you're bringing that suction cup down and down and down, and you realize that terrible sinking feeling in your heart if you had this happen, and you realize this machine is not going to work for this person, they're too small. So you have to take it off, and what do you do? You go back to manual CPR. Or the patient is so big and you go to bring the suction cup down and it hits the chest almost right away. All you're gonna get is a little slap. Not the CPR. And what does the AHA say? Well, the AHA says that the evidence does not demonstrate a benefit with the use of mechanical CPR devices. And I think we'll end it there. Thank you. No difference. Ooh, it's wrong, 
late trial, 2,600 patients out of the hospital cardiac arrest, all comers. No difference four hours, there was also no difference to neurologic outcome at hospital discharge. Paramedic trial, 4,400 patients, all out of hospital cardiac arrest, all comers. Lucas device, there was survival with some favorable neurologic um, outcome in that trial, small. The randomized control studies, yes, show no difference in all comers. <laughs> You see where I'm going? <laughs> this second one here, though, I want to dive into this a little bit. This second randomized control study, which you didn't touch on, does show, and if you're familiar with these plots, that out of all of those all comers, there is a statistically significant favors mechanical. Just, just there. There's signals in the literature, folks. There's things that say there's something about these devices that make a difference. And as good scientists, we should go back and say, what's the inclusion criteria for those studies? And it's because it's all comers. Um, can I have Tracy Stephenson's last slide? I know that's hard, but you said I could use other stuff. I want Tracy Stephenson's last slide. There was two, it's a great slide. There's two people on this slide. I have no allegiance to either <coughs> of them. If the gentleman on the left were to have a cardiac arrest, Big Max, I'm not wishing he did. I'm not wishing he did. Big Max, his lifestyle. That's going to be a plaque rupture cardiac arrest. Probably a plaque rupture cardiac arrest or a plaque rupture. If she has a cardiac arrest, it's not. And I'm not wishing that on her. In fact, I wrote a letter to the Times columnist in support of that lady. But if she were to have a cardiac arrest, she's fertile. If she's got a reversible cause, that, that's pulmonary embolism. There's something else. Those two are not the same cardiac arrest. She would benefit from a Lucas device. If she had a massive pulmonary embolism, the scientists and the physicians in the room know we see people that survive an hour and a half, two hours of CPR while waiting for thrombolysis for their pulmonary embolism with great outcomes. We know that, right? <laughs> but if we only use that device once or twice a year, we are not going to be slick. So I suggest we practice on the one on the left, recognizing that <laughs> he's not going to survive in order for the patient on the right to do better. <laughs> Lucas on doesn't mean they're coming. 
to see Dr. Clark in his emergency room. They can be run with one person, no need to swap out fire crews. Let's get the firemen back out on the streets where they belong. They have a lot of really busy work to do. They don't need to be there helping us. <laughs> hey, this is safer. We're not, we're not going to get um, all of our teams so hurt. WorkSafe BC should be able to support this. They probably would find some funding for it. The message still is we need to practice this with this device for the cases that we know are going to have an impact. I use pulmonary embolism, but if Dr. Brown was here talking about hypothermic arrests, they are again a very statistically powerful group. And if we are only using this device once, and the first time we do it is on a hypothermic arrest, we're not going to be very slick at it. I think we need to get good at it. Finally, we can transport. That's the end of my argument. All right, ladies and gentlemen, two terrific presenters, and now it's time to vote. So, for those in favor of Andrew promoting mechanical CPR in the field, hands up. And for those in favor of Jenny opposed to mechanical CPR, in favor of manual CPR. Twenty-six to twenty-two in favor of Andrew for mechanical CPR. Great debate, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that last presentation is a nice segue to my next point. In BC right now, we have Pulse Point, which is available on your phone, Android or iOS. Thanks to Peter Thorpe, who's in the back of the room. If you have any questions about it, and Pulse Point has donated three T-shirts for us to give to our winners. So I'd like to ask. Mark and uh, Andrew and Oli to come up and receive their Pulse Point t-shirt grand prize. <laughs> Nothing but the best for BCEHS. We, we, 